Welcome back to the greenhouse. We've been out here on and off all day long, basically, working and observing and enjoying the free heat from our compost. Now, after observing our systems through the second day here of the build, I am going to be swapping my water pump to a smaller flow pump that is in our pond here. So I wanted to share that after I observed this through the entire day of working and planting. The greenhouse is looking really good. So sharing all of this and getting everything situated, every little bit of this is very important because we still may have to downsize those lines to get our flow rate from the 1100 we have right now. There goes our fan kicking on. 1100 gallons per hour or 18 gallons per minute the flow rate that we have on the pump now which is way too high what about one gallon per minute or about four liters per minute at the maximum so we're going to have to downsize and we're just trying to see what we can get down to to try and achieve the correct flow rate for that system then we can work on other things in the greenhouse now if that sounds interesting please consider subscribing to the channel you guys make this possible so we want to issue a huge thank you to you guys now let's get right into this video i had detached our power source which is running from that wall down there to power this pump and the pump is absolutely buried in there so i'm gonna have to jenga my way across this thing So that is pretty much it. I'm just cleaning up this transfer line. We are basically just swapping over our systems. We're swapping our pumps from our pond to our heater, heater to our pond. So I have some cool ideas with that pond. We're gonna jump down there and check it out and brainstorm a bit. But right now, I just have this piece of PEX and I've got this shark bite and I'm not gonna be able to get it to release from here without the special tool. So we're gonna go ahead and use this old recycled piece that we got here, we just cleaned up. I removed the other fittings from it. <clears throat> get that on there nice and secure. Nut drivers make life so much easier when you're working with these uh, little hose clamps all the time. So we just got a nice seal on that pump. We're able to transfer up and out of our tank now. Very easy, interchangeable parts all the time. So what we went ahead and did was just replaced pumps. Everything is the same. We just have an elbow here going down to our pump. Now let's go ahead. We're going to turn this thing on, see flow rate, and see if we can get some temperatures before the waning sun's energy depletes and our system shut off. The tank temperature is 63 because we didn't have this running all day. It was actually quite chilly. We're up to 68 already. And we greatly reduced the flow. I notice a lot lighter or smaller of a flow here. I just have this fitting on here to direct it towards the other way so we're recirculating colder water in. So we're up to 72 on the water. Hopefully don't run out of energy here before we see the total temp. 77, 78, 80. All right, so, <clears throat> man, that feels physically warm because this 63 degree water here is coming back out at almost 80 degrees. That is so cool to be able to have this warm water coming out of here. You can take a shower in this stuff. So now that we've achieved a smaller pump and slower flow rate, we're 
holding more constant temperatures. When we first started it with the 1100 gallon pump, it went all the way up to 86 degrees in one burst and it had like bubbles around it, kind of like a hose heating up in summertime. And then we had the cool temperatures, so it came down to like 70 or 77 and it ran and it slowly dropped temperature. So we were overflowing the draw that it could get from that pile. Now this tells me that we're getting somewhere. We can turn the dials and we can lower the flow rate. We're at about 5.8 gallons per minute with 350 gallons per hour in that pump. So we're almost there. I'm going to downsize this a little bit and kind of tweak it, see what I can get for results on that. I want to get the best results out of this, obviously, and I want to share all of the little things that it takes to get to where you need to be. I'm planning ahead and having the perfect pump, this, that, and the other, all set up, lined up, and ready to roll. So we put all the systems together and then relied on all of our solar powered systems and recycled and some new parts to get all of this hooked up and produce some heat in the greenhouse. So we are having great success with all of the experience we've had over the years. So I'd like to go head over to the pond and brainstorm for a minute. So we've got this 1100 gallon per hour pump or 18, close to 20 gallons per minute. That's pretty significant. So I'm gonna end up using this pump on a timer in our pond here. So I am gonna rig something up that I can fix together with parts that I have on hand real quick to provide aeration and water flow and movement. So this little tank is not going to be of use right at the moment for maybe three, four days. This is going to sit stagnant. We're gonna be pulling everything out of there and replanting it with the hopes of being able to grow some crops. I ordered some watercress and hopefully I can get those to germinate because I wanna throw some of those in here and possibly try and get those to do what the mint did this summer. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this together real quick so I can get some flow to the fish even though the sun is going down here. So for right now, until I get serious about designing a system, we're just gonna be plugging a little fitting in there. Hopefully we don't have any flash floods in here. So that is going to have to work for right now. That sucker is flowing. It's not really splashing out, so I don't have to worry about too much catastrophic water loss, but Man, that thing is a strong little pump for 15 bucks. Get some good longevity on this pump. It's only gonna operate this maybe every half hour or 15 minutes of the hour in the winter time here. We're going to set up a timer and cover that in a separate video here. So as far as the greenhouse pond goes, we're losing flow as the power is waning here from the sun. So that system kind of drained up. It had been charging for the last 15 minutes. So having a nice strong pump here, I can hook up a hose and comes back on there. Nice little jump scare from the water pump. So we have these hoses hooked up down here. We've got one and two there. So we have an extra long garden hose like this, a rubber garden hose, we could extend all the way up and to our pump and that is that second black line wrapped around our compost pile. Once these temperatures really start to drop outside, we've had ups and downs. It's been down to 30, high 20s, mid 20s, but we've not had full winter temperatures so I really don't want to lose my son's fish here. But we're going to try and do some insulating with compost heat, basically bringing compost heat in wrapping compost heat around, circulating it through, just trying whatever we can. We're going to try and cover this here. So stay tuned for all of these videos. We've got a ton of stuff to do as far as getting ready for winter now that we've got ourselves a secure heat source for basically free. So if anybody's got any questions on anything I covered today, I really appreciate everybody watching. Thank you to all the subscribers we've gotten recently. You guys are awesome. You guys make this possible. That one kind of got me wet. I'll bring an update on what we're going to do with this and running the lines, attaching everything. So we'll do a separate setup video. We got to replant the aquaponics, lots of stuff all over the greenhouse that needs to be done. I'll see you guys in the next one.